Hi, Oliver. This is chapter six of Incredibles 2, okay? All right. So, a couple days later, the Parr family sat inside a limousine as it drove them over lush rolling hills and toward their new home. Helen spoke with Winston on the phone. We're partners now, she said. Can't have any of my partners living in a motel. But who, whose house, is it a house? Helen asked. Just then, up on a hill, an enormous modern mansion came into view. Dash's jaw dropped as he took in the sight of it. It was a far cry from the Safari Court Motel. It's my house, said Winston. I have several. I'm not using that one. Stay as long as you need. I don't know what to say, said Helen, shocked. How about thanks, said Bob. They hopped uh, out of the limo and rushed to the front door. As it swung open, the family stood for a moment, staring. With its high ceilings, massive boulders, indoor fountains, and waterfalls, it looked like the luxurious lair of a high-profile spy. This is our new house, said Dash, beyond thrilled. Okay, easy, Tiger. It's being loaned to us, said Helen, as they slowly made their way through, looking around. Eh, this is homey, said Violet sarcastically, not nearly as taken as Dash. I mean, look at this place, said Bob. Winston bought it from an eccentric billionaire who liked to come and go without being seen, so the house has multiple hidden exits. Eager to explore, Dash zoomed away. Good thing we won't stand out, said Violet let her voice still dripping with sarcasm. Wouldn't want to attract any unnecessary attention. It's got a big yard, screamed Dash from the outside. Helen turned to Bob, a little uncertain. This is, this isn't this a bit much? Near a forest, added Dash. Would you rather be in a motel, Bob asked, knowing uh, the, the answer. And a pool, shouted Dash. They heard a loud splash as Dash did a cannonball into the pool. What exactly is Mom's new job, asked Violet. Instead of answering the question, Bob reminded her that they were out of the motel. Dash zipped back in, soaking wet with a huge smile on his face. He shook himself dry like a dog. Then he noticed a remote control hanging on the wall. He grabbed it and started pressing random buttons. Suddenly, a deep humming came from beneath the house as sections of the floor began to separate. The sections pulled apart like pieces of a puzzle, revealing more fountains and hidden streams. Dash pressed another button, and more secret panels parted, unveiling a secret waterfall. The water spilled from the ceiling and dropped in rolling patterns, falling into hidden pools beneath the floor. Wicked cool, he exclaimed. Just then, a large couch began to tumble into one of the streams on the floor. Dash panicked and poked at the button again, and the floor started closing on the couch, crushing it. Bob and Helen shouted at him, and he nervously pressed more buttons. But the floors continued to open and close, bashing the couch. Finally, Dash gave up, chuckling, chucking the remote and running off. Later that day, Bob held Jack-Jack as Elastigirl emerged from the bathroom wearing her new super suit the Deavers had sent. Uh, it was shiny gray and was patterned with light black scales. This isn't me, she said, looking at herself in a full-length mirror. She turned, assessing the suit from different angles. I'm not all dark and angsty. I'm Elastigirl, you know, I'm flexible. E designed it. E designed this? asked Bob. No, some guy named Alexander Galbacki, she answered. Bob burst out laughing at the thought of Edna seeing Elastigirl wearing another designer's suit. He knew she was furious. Glad it's you and not me, because you're going to hear from her. Then he handed her a card that had come with the super suit. In neat handwriting, it's read, Elastigirl, there's an accessory in the garage, signed Evelyn. Minutes later, Elastigirl and Bob entered the garage and saw a gleaming, high-tech, red motorcycle. Clearly designed specifically for her, it was made of two separate unicycles powered by a small rocket. Elastigirl's eyes lit up. A new Elasticycle, she said. I didn't know you had a bike, said Bob, surprised. Hey, I had a mohawk, she said. There's a lot about me you don't know. 
Elastigirl saddled the bike and felt a rush of excitement. She activated the handles and it sparked to life, humming with power. A message appeared on the dashboard. Hope you like it, ED. She gave it a little gas and it roared, spinning around in a tight circle. She hopped on one leg as it swerved into a wall. Whoa, 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 oh, she shrieked. She stopped the bike. Hey, I'll get the hang of it. You will be great, said Bob. I will be great, she said, and you will too. We will both be great, said Bob, smiling confidently. They said goodbye, and Bob pressed a button on the wall. The garage door slid open, and a thin waterfall rushed down, dividing the garage and the beautiful landscape outside. Elastigirl hit the accelerator, and the waterfall created a hole that she zoomed through. Feeling a mixture of pride and envy, Bob stood holding Jack-Jack as, as he watched uh, her race out into the open road. The next morning, he prepared breakfast for the kids. Jack-Jack sat in the high chair, shoving cereal into his mouth and dropping a lot on the floor. And Dash started to fill a bowl with a sugary cereal called Sugar Bombs. But Bob grabbed the box out of his hands. No sugar bombs on my watch. Dash grumbled as Bob replaced the sugary cereal with a more reasonable box of fibros. Dash shrugged and asked where his mother was as he held up a spoonful of a bland cereal. She's up and out, answered Bob. She's at her new job during, doing hero work. But I thought superheroes were still illegal, said Violet. They are, said Bob. For now, he added. So Mom is getting paid to break the law? Violet said, amazed that neither of her parents saw anything wrong with this idea. She's an advocate for superheroes, said Bob, trying to make it sound good. It's a new job. So mom is going out illegally to explain why she shouldn't be illegal, said Violet. Bob squirmed and looked out of the window as he tried to think of how to get Violet to see it his way. He brightened when he saw the school bus arrived. The bus is here, he cheered. With super speed, Dash finished his cereal, refilled a second bowl with sugar bombs, wolfed it down, and grabbed his backpack. Violet headed for the door, and Bob stuffed a textbook into ba Dash's backpack before he raced out. Relieved, Bob lifted Jack-Jack out of his high chair and cooed, Oh, we're going to get along just fine, because you don't ask any <laughs> hard questions. Jack-Jack giggled and babbled happily. End of chapter six. Next chapter is chapter seven in Incredibles 2. Da-da-da-da. da 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 da